Welcome back to Acrylic Arts Academy. Today we'll be painting a beautiful New Mexico sunrise, the inspiration for which is based on a photo by one of our artist community members. Thanks, Kathy. For this tutorial, you'll need an 8x10 canvas, this set of Salvador acrylic paints, which includes 24 22 milliliter tubes and offers much more paint than we'll need today. We snagged this set on Super Sale. It was less than $10 on Amazon. We'll link to that in the description below. Start with white paint and a three quarter inch flat brush. Cover the top third of the canvas with white. Let's add some brilliant blue to blend a sky color using a wet on wet blending technique. Apply this color while the paint is still wet and use broad horizontal brush strokes to blend these two shades on the canvas. Take your time and add more white or blue as needed. Since you're blending, there's no need to clean your brush in between colors. Keep painting side to side horizontal brush strokes and cover the top half of the canvas. Don't worry about creating a perfectly straight horizon line.
Paint the sides of the canvas with this color as well. It will help you later on when you display it on the wall. The painted sides will look great. Clean your brush off and switch to Ultramarine. Add this color to the top part of the canvas and blend it well as we just did here. Use a clean and dry mop brush to smooth this gradient out. Just swish lightly over the paint. Let the sky portion dry before moving on. This usually takes 15 minutes. For this next part, we'll be using Permanent Red Violet, Azo Yellow Medium, and Pyrrole Red. We'll also use a half inch flat brush. As shown here, use this brush to add Pyrrole Red, it's more like a bright orange, to the canvas. Create an uneven strip below the skyline. There's no need to be uniform, so just follow our lead. Without cleaning your brush, pick up some permanent red violet color and blend it using a wet on wet technique. Use small sideways oval shapes to apply this color over some of the orange parts. It's okay for these two colors to blend and they'll look great together. Keep swirling this color in different spots and follow what's shown here. Leave the brush strokes showing or blend them in a little as you work.
Clean off your brush and scoop up some azo yellow medium color. Apply it over the orange in certain parts and blend it all while the paints are still wet. It's okay if the colors become more subtle as you work. Let's switch to primary yellow and a smaller round brush. Add some splashy pops of this lighter yellow to the underside of these clouds. This can be done by adding swirls, sliced lines, or simply by adding cloud shapes in small proportions. Using a small round brush or switching to a half inch flat brush is okay as you wish. Take your time adding these brighter clouds. There's no rush, so enjoy the process. Switch back to pure red or permanent red violet as needed to keep the colors looking bold. When you're pleased with the skyline, switch to a small detailer brush or a small round brush. Use any sky color and any mixture to add details to these clouds. Create subtle shifts of color by adding pure azo yellow medium to the brightest parts or permanent red violet to the darker bits. Add as many or as few details as you wish.
When you like the level of detail in the skyline, switch to Oxide Black and a half inch flat brush. This part of the painting will be all black with no shifts in color because the foreground is all in shadow. It will make this part easier to paint and it'll look awesome. Follow our lead to cover the rest of the unpainted canvas with black. This piece of land is somewhat hilly and mountainous, so there's no need to paint straight across. For now, we'll let this part dry and head back to the skyscape to add a few more clouds. For these clouds, you'll need permanent red violet, pearl red, and titanium white, as well as a small round brush. Mix two parts white, one part permanent red violet, and one part pearl red to create a lovely salmon color. If you need a reminder on how to paint clouds, please check out our cloud painting tutorial in another window and come back when you have the gist of things. Use small concentric circles swirled together to create small patches of clouds using this color. Create a patch on the left and on the right as seen in the example. After adding these little patches, scoop up some permanent red violet without cleaning your brush and swirl it into the salmon color you just applied. Add some to the upper portion of your salmon colored clouds and swirl the paint using concentric circles. Work your way across the canvas. We're creating an organically shaped bridge of shadowy clouds across the top of this canvas. It's easier than it sounds, just follow what you see here. When you have some color down by using the round brush, switch to a half inch flat brush that's clean and preferably dry. Without applying paint, use this brush to swirl and blend these colors. The color will become less bold and that's okay, it'll look more like clouds. Next, we'll use a somewhat unconventional method. Mix primarily white with a touch of medium brilliant blue to create a sky blue color. While the paint you just applied is still wet, add some of this color to the clouds. Swirl these colors together so that it looks like you have your clouds tinted by the background of a blue sky.
As shown here, add a little bit more permanent red-violet to the mix near the middle of the canvas. Clean off your brush and scoop up more of the salmon color. Add it to the areas of clouds that already were salmon on the right side of the canvas. From here, we'll keep switching back and forth between salmon and permanent red-violet to create more patches of clouds. It may seem like a lot, but you're making these beautiful clouds to your specifications while utilizing a wet-on-wet -wet blending technique. Keep using your creative intuition and do what works best for you. Remember to keep the visual balance by bridging these clouds across the canvas. They do not need to be uniform. Switch back to a smaller round brush and add more minor details and swirls of color. Keep the colors somewhat consistent to allow the sense of light to be uniform throughout. This will help your painting seem realistic and like the light comes from one source. For instance, the salmon color ends up living on the underside of these clouds because they're lit from an angle below. The permanent red-violet color will tend to be on the top part of these clouds. Let's create some highlights by adding a bright yellow to the salmon color mix and applying it using a round brush to the underside of some of these clouds. The color will mix in and become slightly more subtle. Adding more yellow will allow these highlights to pop. Take your time and switch colors and brushes to fortify the highlights and lowlights for these cloud formations. It's good to add small patches of clouds in between the bigger formations. There's no rush, so take your time painting these beautiful clouds. This part is a fun way to analyze the highlights and shadows of each cloud, and take your time creating realistic formations. You'll find that you will go back and forth using various colors and brushes, and over time it will be easier to make these decisions. This is a great way to build your confidence as a painter.
Now you'll need a small liner or detailer brush as shown here. We'll also be using oxide black. Using a very light touch and a small amount of black paint, let's add some tiny details to our foreground, which is in shadow. Follow our lead as we add some subtle branches growing out of the foreground. Make two tiny trees and or branches as you see here. Then we'll build out the mountainous formations towards the middle. This makes the foreground a little more detailed though it's in shadow. Make some small branch-like lines around the middle too. These represent the natural vegetation that is present in the reference photo. Let's add a few details on the left side of the painting. This part will be vegetation as well, though it will look a little different. Start by making a thin and slightly jagged line that leans to the right a little bit. Use a stippling motion to gently add tiny dots of black paint near the line to insinuate a thin tree trunk with some leaves. Only add these dots towards the top of the trunk. To the left of this branch, create a longer and taller one. Let it reach past the first branch and bend in the same direction. Remember, this doesn't need to be straight, nor does it need to be perfect. Using the same stippling method, add a few dots of color in a disorganized way towards the top of the thin branches. Great work, you finished this beautiful New Mexico sunset painting, so give yourself a pat on the back. Be sure to sign your work and let it dry completely before varnishing. If you need to know how to varnish, watch the video on our channel to teach you the basics. Thanks for spending some time with Acrylic Arts Academy today. We hope you had fun creating this lovely piece of art. If you want to keep building your painting skills, subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and feel free to let us know where in the world you are watching from in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Expand your painting skills by taking one of our free guided courses by subject. Just visit acrylicartsacademy.com slash free courses. If you want to support us, please consider leaving a one-time gratuity at the link in the description below. See you next time.